and welcome to a new CD news reviews it's somewhere in between it's not really news it's not really reviews eh, it's in the middle there somewhere news with attitude how about that so there's no talk of mastering quality or anything like that so we just get straight to the music but there's opinion and let's get straight to it there are 10 cds on offer for this video first up is a slice of jazz the yoko miwa trio is what i'm talking about here and Yoko Miwa is an interesting lady. She is actually also a professor from Barclay College of Music in Boston. I think that's correct. This is the album. It's in a digipack format and it's called Songs of Joy. It's also on the Ubuntu record label, which is a Linux operating system, isn't it? On her new album, Japanese pianist Yoko Miwa appears here with bassist Will Slater and Scott Golding on drums. On this new release, she combines five of her own compositions with tracks from the likes of Thelonious Monk, Richie Havens, Billy Preston, and more. In stature, she's only a little thing, but her style is quite powerful. She attacks the keys, giving her music a big, bold, definite, direct, and grand delivery. Another CD, another digipack. This one is by a folk band, folk rock, I suppose you could say, called Shugla Nifty. Intriguing name on the Shugle record label. You can see a pattern here, can't you? The actual album is called Acid Croft Number no. 9, which sounds like some psychedelic outing from the late 60s, but there you go. Recorded in the watercolour studios in the Scottish Highlands, in spitting distance of Ben Nevis, if you can spit really really well this folk rock outing is the band's ninth album hence the title featuring songs by band members and i apologize now if i ruin anyone's name here ellie shaw on fiddle ewan mcpherson on mandolin and kayla roan on vocals the album also includes compositions by shugal pals ian carr and tia files who is a member of the poozies there's a lively contrast of low-slung rock vibes with the treble-infused mandolin and fiddle here that conveys a real sense of life, energy and sparkle, which in itself underlies the entire album. Well, I can tell you now, I'm in trouble with this one. This is on the Bureau B label, and that's the easy bit. The guy behind this is, I think, Schlampheitzeiger, and the name of the album I'll put on the screen. Now, I prefer Joe Zimmerman, because that's his real name. He's from Cologne, and he's been active as a musician since 1992, creating lo-fi krautrock. This is album number 10 from the man. There's eight tracks on this album, which the press release refers to as, and I quote, sun-drenched. And you know what? It's absolutely right. Track one, Veltek, is a slow-moving, easy-going, slightly quirky and eccentric yet good humored song that eases a smile on your face combining organic and electronic instruments this is a perfect album for spring it offers renewal hope and fluffy bunny rabbits this is cherries on the loose 28 first recordings in a nice digipack it's from the rockstar imprint atomic cat where oh where can my baby be? The Lord took her away from me. Such are the poignant words from the first track from Wayne Cochran's Last Kiss. This one from 1961. A jolly tale of losing your girlfriend in a car crash. A variation on the classic Lost Love Story song type. But variation is the key to this compilation which focuses on 50s rock and roll and pop but dips into the 40s and 60s as well. Hence, you'll find The Crickets featuring Sonny Curtis on guitar, replacing the late Buddy Holly with 1959's I Fought the Law. Johnny Fuller's Haunted House, complete with Scary Laugh, and R&B Goodness from Mary Knight with 1956's Tell Me Why. Excellent, excellent compilation. On the HNE label, we have Leonard Skinner. This is later period Leonard Skinner and this is a box set of a whole heap of albums and let me just show you there we go you see 
one little box set and there's a poster in there. Let me tell you more about it. Presented as you've just seen in a clam shell box, this box set is subtitled Nothing Comes Easy 1991 to 2012. The collection features five albums from the band and includes a mini poster that has on the flip a full track listing and production credits of the included discs. So what do you get? Well, there's Leonard Skinner 1991 that was produced after the completion of the 87 reunion tour, full of energy and passion. It's not a great album, but ideal for fans. Next, The Last Rebel emerged in 1993 as the follow-up to Leonard Skinner 1991. This one kind of treads water, but again, fans should be happy with it. Zooming onwards now to 2009's Gods and Guns. This arrives with an extra EPCD from the same period, and Gary Rossington as the only remaining original band member. The band might sound familiar, but also noticeably replaces the original vocalist Ronnie Van Zant's layered nuanced and emotionally complex singing style with a one-dimensional ego strut, to be honest. Last of a Dying Breed from 2012, it's certainly a break from the band's southern rock of the past, that's true, and it has a more modern heavy rock layering. Don't expect to find the lost soul of Leonard Skinner in this particular box set that died in a host of tragic deaths that plagued the band over the years. This box contains only echoes, which for fans in need of solace may very well be enough. Next on the Jasmine label is Doug Psalm and Crazy Crazy Feeling. A man imbued with the spirit of Texas, Psalm had a long career and a host of different phases within that career, while packing in recordings devoted to rock and blues, and country, and Cajun, and western swing, and a whole lot more. A child prodigy on both pedal steel guitar and mandolin, he made his recording debut in 1955 and ended through to the late 90s when he died of a heart attack, a victim of his lifestyle. The UK independent newspaper quoted Psalm in his obituary, who said, I did a lot of drugs, but I did a lot of rhythm and blues. This collection of 30 tracks features a host of fascinating songs. They begin with the child performance in the song A Real American Joe. That was part of the band Little Doug and the Bandits. And the compilation carries on to other bands like the Pharaohs, the Knights, the Marquis, the Dell Kings, the Spot Barnet Band, and more. The CD is packed with his work from the Renner label, thought by many to be his finest work. Another one on Jasmine, this is the original mono singles, A's and B's, from the great Roy Orbison. There's 33 tracks on this CD, ranging from 1956 to 1962, and from the Teen Kings combo singing trying to get to you, to his frustrating time on RCA, with tracks like Almost 18 and classics like Only the Lonely, all the way through to Working for the Man on the Monuments label. This is a neat, tidy and classic collection. Jasmine again, this is the 1962 studio recordings for Barbara Streisand, a lovely little compilation from the legendary singer that's neatly split into two. The first 14 tracks look at her Columbia sides, featuring two singles, including tracks like Happy Days Are Here Again. There's also songs from a couple of soundtracks, including I Can Get It For You Wholesale and Pins and Needles, plus a host of RCA demos from an unreleased album, 11 in all. The demos include Lover Come Back To Me from Romberg and Hammerstein, Rogers and Hearts Bewitched, and I Had Myself a True Love from Harold Arlen and Johnny Mercer. This is a cracking selection and well worth grabbing for fans of the lady or anyone who appreciates the craft of song interpretation. And Jasmine are on a roll. We have Matt Guitar Murphy in session. This CD offers a superb blues guitar fest with the much underappreciated artist who appears here enriching the work of much bigger names, it has to be said, including the likes of Junior Parker, Chuck Berry, Muddy Waters, and others. Murphy's work with Memphis Slim should be isolated for particular praise. His 50s sourced recordings behind Slim 
are of particular recommendation for any blues fan. There's 28 tracks here of blues richness. And we'll finish off with a bit of hard rock, shall we? This is on the SPV label, and it's another digipack. And we're looking at the band Mad Max and the album title, Storm Child Rising. It's not particularly innovative, I have to say. In fact, I've seen more innovation in a cheese sandwich. It doesn't really push any boundaries. There's nothing really new here. And the hard rock fan probably has 47 variations of this album already on their shelves. But, but, this melodic approach to rock will hit the nostalgia nerve in many rockers. It smells of the 80s, and many will find that aroma completely irresistible. This is a must to jump around the room to. It's a party record. It's a, well, it's an air guitar record. It's a singing in the shower record. In short, it's fun. And I hope that was fun. Well, even just a little bit, because we've now come to the end. I want to thank you for staying with me to the end of this video. And I want to thank you for your support. If you can, please, if you can click the like and also subscribe buttons, that'd be very nice of you indeed. Check out the description for links to my website and also all my social media links. And I'm already working on a new video, so check that one out. I'll be back very soon indeed. Until that time, bye-bye for now.